be really great weather to watch a sci-fi recently. <laughs> Galaxy Quest, released in 1999. 1999, yeah. And directed by Dean Pariso. Production budget of 45 million, a domestic take of 71 million, an international take of 19 million, for a total of 90 million worldwide, and a 45 million dollar profit. Less all marketing and associated costs, of course. This rather meta sci fi parody stars Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, Alan Rickman, Sam Rockwell, Tony Shalhoub, and Daryl Mitchell. A couple of things I want to get out of the way real quick so we can talk about my favorite thing about this film the practical effects, the special effects, the CGI, you know, the makeup, the costume stuff. It, it all works quite well. Set design, the alien worlds the aliens themselves you know all that sort of thing looks good it really really plays out very nicely on screen and reminds you of all the sci-fi shows you've seen on TV before which I'm pretty certain is intentional also quick mention the lighting the lighting is very clever okay in the real world on earth the lighting is very natural it feels like you're getting around on earth okay when they're on the spaceship all right when they're on the spaceship it it feels like, well, it feels like spaceship lighting, mainly because it feels exactly like one of the shows. It feels like Star Trek or Orville or Star Wars or Babylon 5 or any of those, right? Farscape, there's another one. It feels like the lighting on any of those shows as are on the sets. Again, intentional. I'm sure of it. Even many of the camera angles and the style of shot is reminiscent of all those cool TV shows. The changeover is subtle. It's not jarring. It's just... There's limitations and a particularly artificial feeling that they generate on the ships. I, I really like that. Now the really good bit is the combination of the story, the writing, and the characters. Taking a bunch of mostly veteran actors and having them portray characters who are tired veteran actors of a TV show doing the rounds of various conventions and openings and all that sort of stuff. So you take that concept, that little world, and you throw it into the what if it's true? What if there are aliens? There are spaceships. And not only is it real, but a whole race of aliens has watched this show and believe there'd be historical documents and they believe it to be real because their life is real. So you take these former TV sci-fi stars and throw them into a real sci-fi environment where it's all real. And the only way that they're actually going to survive out there is by acting the part literally pretending to be the characters they were on the show to survive the scenario in space. A movie about TV stars in space dealing with aliens as if it was a real thing. Casting someone like Sigourney Weaver in a sci-fi parody about sci-fi parodies is is just is brilliant. It's 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 inception. It's just so good. But all the faking it till you make it jokes are, are really good. Like the pilot who can't fly because it's not real. So he has to go back and watch the old episodes of his character flying to learn how to fly the ship because they've modeled the ship on those episodes. I could keep going on like this. The, the joke is spectacular and it just keeps going and they dive into the meta of the different jokes. Tim Allen's character actually loses his shirt. You know, it gets ripped off him at some time, he's running around shirtless, much like it used to happen. The fact that Weaver's only job is to repeat what the computer says. And even the actual plot of the story in space is very much like a plot of a show. The starship meets an alien race, they're hostile, there's a miscommunication, now there's war, there's threat, there's invasion, there's all this sort of crazy stuff. They've got to run around on the inside of the ship doing ridiculous things, just like an old show. And then th that little part of me, that part of me that loves when the meta meta becomes reality in the reality of the movie, came true as well. Those who have ever watched Never Ending Story, which I will review soon-ish, one day, Remember at the end of the movie where the kids on the great big flying fluffy dragon flies back into his world reality and chases the bullies down the street. That did my head in as a little kid when I saw that the first time. But they do that again here where one of the communicators ends up with some bunch of kids. So they end up talking to these kids back on Earth to help them get through some problems because they know the show better than the actors do. Kids even help them crash land the spaceship back on Earth and actually save the day. So to me, the execution of this idea, this concept, this convoluted joke within a joke about a movie, about a TV show sort of thing, it really entertains me. It, I find the whole thing fascinating. I like to see them take this and turn it into something like the Orville. The difference being everyone on the ship knows it's not really real, but it's also very real. They could just keep running this gag. 
Anyhow, as for score, here's the breakdown. It's going to get a very comfortable 17.5. And I absolutely recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the sci-fi TV genre, okay? This one, this one just touches on everything that we like about it, everything that we know that's stupid about it, and has a fair good go at the convention scene as well. That, all across the board, it's actually quite clever. Anyhow, there's my review of Galaxy Quest. Have you seen this one? Please comment down below on the Facebook page. Let me know what you think. Do the like, share, subscribe thing. But most importantly, I hope that you're having a great week and you get some time to go watch a movie. <laughs>